Good morning, champions. Feels like it. It's good to have you in church today. Expect an encounter with the one who has begotten you because he is here mightily to meet you at the point of your needs. Welcome to the assembly of the God begotten. It's like we've forgotten. Tell your neighbor, I am the God begotten. In case he did not hear well, tell another person, I am the God begotten. Yes, your God, your, your Papa, Nayawe. Maybe that's how he said, God himself is your father. So when you say, I'm the God begotten, you are announcing that my father is Yahweh. We are still looking at what it means to be begotten of love. And today, we will go to where we have been this past week. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 and then John chapter 15 verse 12. We've been on a series begotten of love. This is my commandment. I read the, the John scripture first. That you love one another as I have loved you. This is Jesus speaking. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 has been helping, 13 generally, has been helping us to understand when Jesus says love one another, love as I have loved, what does he mean by love? Today's focus gives us Jesus' understanding of love in a sense. It says love is not irritable or consent or resentful. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Yes, love is not irritable love is not resentful the love of god in us is not touchy it's not oversensitive it's not fretful it's not resentful you and i are commanded to love like jesus and one of the ways that god loves us is that he is not irritated at all the little mistakes we make daily he's not resentful by our imperfect life so when paul said in that scripture that love is not irritable and love is not resentful it literally covers every kind of irritability that you can think of my time will not permit me to look at them one by one and i would really want us to pay attention here because i feel it may touch a lot of us but if it doesn't touch you this very attributes of love literally just sat on my head so god will help me here because i find that i am very short fused with some kinds of people you know you meet certain kinds of people and it's like they are wired to produce a reaction from you every single time have those kinds of people i don't know about you but here's what i have learned that those people that come across me and before they say jack i've already flown off the handle that they are not the problem that I am the problem. And the problem isn't that they do the things they do or they behave the way they behave. The problem is that I have failed to love them appropriately. That's been my own. Today I want to talk to you about a person I call Liel. We all have a Liel. To some of us, Liel is a blood relative, a son, a daughter, a nephew, an auntie, an uncle. To others, is a close associate, your spouse, your husband or your wife a classmate in school, a classmate in the university, a neighbor, a roommate in the hostel, a fellow church member, a colleague at work, an employee of yours, or even one of your bosses. None of us actually intentionally keeps Liel as a friend because um, he's never really our friend in the sense of the word friend, even if he's close to us. He may be a friend's friend. Even if he's our spouse, if Liel is your spouse, he's definitely not your friend. So who is Liel? Liel is that individual that seems to have the uncanny ability to get on our nerves, even without trying. He rubs us the wrong way and seems to have a button that unleashes the part of us that only a Liel can bring out. Liels have the exceptional ability to push us beyond our normal threshold of endurance and reasonableness. People have seen you as cool, calm, collected, and Liel comes over and you're like, my friend, if you try it, and people are like, where did that come from? They have no problem repeating, Liels have no problem repeating the same mistake over and over and over again and apologizing for that same thing this, um, every single time. Now, Liels can exasperate you 
simply by just showing up. They've said nothing. They've done nothing. You just turn and see one of your Liels and you are angry. It's almost as if Liel possesses some kind of sharp edges that punctures and wounds us personally when they come close in speech or in deed. They have the ability to arouse, stimulate, and provoke us to rust and irritation. Now, Liel is that guy that doesn't seem to be using his mind at all. If you could ever bring yourself to call another man a fool, Liel would be him. Liel is an insensitive, inconsiderate man or woman whose dull patterns of behavior persist despite your attempt at correction. Just in case you are still not sure whether you have a Liel, when next you catch yourself losing your temper, check your heart again. Most times, if not all the time, it is because of a Liel. Today, the Holy Spirit is bringing us help and release from Liels. Can you say amen? amen? Where is the help coming from? 1 Corinthians 13, 5. Love is not irritable. He said, but what, how is that the help? Well, like I said, what I learned earlier, Liel was never the problem. This was my first lesson as I tried to study this verse. Yes, Liel is dense. Yes, Liel is inattentive. He's careless. He's forgetful, extremely clumsy, ungrateful, and even maybe willfully disrespectful. He breaks the, everything that you put in his hands, does nothing well, and is involved in all things stupid. But Liel is not a threat to world peace. Liel simply doesn't seem to have to be available to serve your own personal preference. Is not available to serve your own personal sensitivities. You will find that when you love a person, your emotions are at peace with that person. But when you dislike a person, you are more prone to irritability and resentment over the actions of that person. And you will also discover that most times you overreacted, not because of the action that was done, but because of who did what. So this takes me to the second thing I learned while um, looking at this verse, the first one being that Leo was never the problem. You cannot forget that. A Leo to you may be a Leo to it, may not be a Leo to another person. So I may be annoying to you, irritable to you, resentful to you, but I may be an MVP elsewhere to another person. Why? All our Leos are people who are low in our unique areas of gifting. So if you are super intelligent, you're going to make Liels out of everyone around you who are not that smart. If you are a fast and deep thinker, your Liels will be people who are superficial, who do not seem to be able to use their minds. Because you just cannot understand. This thing is easy. Why are you not able to do it? That's why I say my Liel may not be your Liel. And that takes us back to the first thing, that Liel is not the problem. You are. You don't have a Liel problem. You have a love problem. Liel has no problem you do. You have a love problem. Liel is not the problem you are. And if you remember what we did last two weeks, you are actually seeking your own way at the expense of others. That's why it is irritating to you. That's why it is resentful to you. So why are you, okay, if you just want to sit back to think about it, why are you irritated at Liel? Could it be because he doesn't go the way you want him to go? Why does Liel provoke you very easily? I don't know if I'm communicating. Do we have Liels that we... we... Why does Liel provoke you very easily? Is it not because he doesn't want... He doesn't do the things you expect him to do? Why do you get easily angry at Liel? Is it not because he isn't the way you want him to be? You have all these five sons. This one... He just does his things like Ido woman, woman, That why do you fly off the handle over any issue concerning Liel? Could it be because you don't want Liel to be involved in your affairs? You have a council, but your bosses speak, and the one that is a Liel contributes something. And he just feels like will that man shut up there, even though you've not said anything. And he may be saying something very reasonable. So who then is at the center of our anger, touchiness, sensitivity, irritability, and provocation? We, we may think it's Liel, but no, we, it's not Liel, it's actually us. We are offended because Liel won't do us. He won't prioritize us. He won't 
prioritize our convenience. He will not worship our ego. He will not protect our name. How dare you do that? Do you know how people will see me now? Because we failed to love Liel appropriately. So everything Liel does is a problem. We are irritated because Liel can't remember our preferences. I don't like my cup or my Bible. What is wrong with you? And every day Liel keeps the cup here. We are touchy because though we are intent on having our way, the cup should be here. Liel just won't let us. He comes, sees the cup here, he relocates it here. And you're like, use your mind. If water pours, the Bible will get weight. Liel brings back the cup next time, next time and puts it on your iPad. You are resentful because you feel Liel has said or done something against you or something that is personally offensive to you. So you keep getting irritated at Leo because he keeps interfering with your plans he keeps doing what you don't want him to do and in your anger in our anger we violate the law of love in our resentment we say certain things to Leo because no angry person has any good thing to say to another if Leo is behaving this way because of a low of low self worth in our anger we push Leo deeper into that pit because we remind Leo he is he is inattentive. We remind him of his usefulness, his inadequacies, his ineptitude, his incapability. And all of those words get back stored. So next time Liel is in another location, Liel just shows how inadequate he is. Paul is calling us today to love. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of Liels and I am never, never kind to my Liels. I, if I come back home and they say, Someone else broke my cup. Say who? Say this. Oh, must have been a mistake. In fact, if the person comes to apologize, I'm like, don't worry. It could have been a mistake. I understand. And I come back home and they say, Liel broke my cup. I'll say, call him for me. How did you and my cup come in contact with each other? What else are you going to break so I can prepare myself for it? Because all you do in this house is break things. It, has, it had never occurred to me that just maybe I actually feel like crying because it never occurred to me that Liel could have made a sincere mistake at that time. But because it was a Liel, what does he do? He breaks things. You put this in his hands, he tears it. You put that in his hands, it goes out a wire. And in that moment, I bury Liel even more. I, because I have failed to see Liel as a person. Imagine if Jesus buried us every time we made a mistake. Can you imagine Jesus on the cross surrounded by Liels with guns as the nails went into his hand? That was the height of irritation. Instead of resentment, what did he give? Forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He so passed the action to the main, to the ignorance, to the blindness. I have never seen past the action of my Liels to the fact that he could just be clumsy. He could just be that he doesn't even know. Or maybe he has a hard time taking instructions. God, uh, Paul, through the Holy Spirit, through Paul, is calling us back to begin to love the clueless, the inattentive, the difficult, the people who don't get it, who don't seem to use their minds, who don't seem to catch it, even if you say it a million times. The ones who, who look at you, say yes, mommy, yes, daddy, walk away and do what you did not say at all. And then next time you ask them, how did this happen? They say, that is what you said, ma. Leo has never been the problem. When next you meet your Leo, when next Leo breaks your glass, when next Leo brings you a file that is dirty and the, the paper that your memo is oil stained and you're wondering, are you blind? You could not see this. Remember that Leo is an opportunity to demonstrate the love of God, to imitate the Father. As we rise and take our confession this morning, I want us to... Look at Jesus on the cross and all of those Liels. They were talking. They didn't even know he was dying for them. If you and I were there, we would have had a comment or two. Surrounded by Liels, the man did not say anything. He was not irritated. 
he didn't see the nail he didn't see their foolishness he didn't see the denseness of their minds he looked through and saw that they were blind if they knew better they would act better may God help us this morning say this with me I am begotten of love to manifest love say it like you mean it I am commanded to love others just like Jesus loves me I forgive as I have been forgiven I am patient with others because God is patient with me I bear the injury of others as Jesus bore mine on the cross with the help of God I will love my neighbor as myself I am the God begotten the love of the Father abides in me. I am not ruled by my emotions. I have control over my spirit. I am quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. From today, I commit to never avenging myself. I refrain from making hasty conclusions and judgment and I lay aside bitter words temper tantrums profanity and insults I insert your name I Yene Patrick Grace Henry I'm the official representative of the God who is love let's take that again Ian Patrick Grace Henry I'm the official representative of the God who is love I am an echo of God's forgiving fervent love daily the Holy Spirit helps me to live out my God created identity my life of love will draw men to the kingdom I am a partaker of God's divine nature his love is shed abroad in my heart as he is so am I in this world I am the God begotten I am filled with the spirit of love my heart harbors no irritation no hate no unrighteousness from today I will walk firmly but patiently with those who are difficult and disobedient the love of God in me is not irritable I will not allow myself to be roused to sinful anger I am not dependent on my own strength I am divinely enabled to love God is at work in me giving me the passion to do what pleases him so raise your voice and say Lord awaken your love nature in me just awaken love in me just keep using your own words to tell the Lord awaken love in me awaken love in me awaken love in me Lord awaken love in me help me to love like you do help me to see like you do help me to think like you do help me to love like you do 